So now I'd like to discuss the way these phantoms are controlled. Uh, the PBRS family of phantoms, they have the same motor and controller. And with that, you have the ability to actually control the phantom from the motor itself. So it doesn't need to be connected to software. So with this knob that you see on the left side of your screen, you can put it into two different modes where it's positional or rotational. And I'll talk about those a little bit later in the demo. And then there's also a mechanical way to adjust the amplitude. And so this is only available on the CT-based phantoms, um, but with those phantoms, you also have the option of connecting to our software suite. And what that does is it allows you to import uh, waveforms from an, an SGRT system, and you can replay those waveforms uh, on the actual phantom. So you can connect uh, directly uh, with an Ethernet cable to your laptop, or you can actually connect through with a, a, a local area network or, or that sort of a setup. So. Uh, just to go over it again, so the, the PREST family has the ability for manual operation at the motor and software, whereas the MRI 4D Phantom uh, only has control with our software. So a software feature that I'd like to focus on a bit before we get into the demonstration is our Deep Inspiration Breath Hold Mode. So all three devices have this ability, and, and what it really does is it provides efficiency for physicists that like to use a breath hold technique in their treatment protocols. And um, again, this shows MODIS's response to uh, feedback from their customers. And this was a physicist's response where uh, they asked for it and we delivered it. And it's actually become a very uh, popular tool within the software. And um, again, just wanted to bring some attention to it so that you're aware it exists. And we are the only uh, Phantom manufacturer that includes this with their software. I will now provide an overview of our motion software. And this is a simple application to use. Uh, you can see on the screen, the bottom left, there's two main windows. And the first one is phantom control. And this is where you're gonna operate your motion phantom. And the second window is wave editor. And this is where you can make adjustments to any uh, captured or imported waveforms. I'll start off with the phantom control. Uh, there are three modes of operation here. And the first one's position mode. And with this, you can uh, move the phantom to a set position um, from the central axis, and it'll be in a remain in a static position. So currently it's at zero. I'm going to grab the slider bar, move it a bit to 10, and it's going to place the insert at that location. And so this is useful for making you know uh, static adjustments uh, so that you don't have to go back into your, your treatment room and um, be able to make adjustments as you go. So as an example, you can you can be delivering a beam at this fixed location, and if you're trying to test a, a beam off situation or a gating situation, you could potentially um, just move your move the device itself and just verify that your your operation is performing as you want it to. Uh, so that's just a simple positional mode, and it, you know again has the full range of of 20 uh, positive to 20 negative very easy to use and um, and it has the option of inverting your display for any of our our waveforms and that's just a preference of how you wish to view it um, and for moving on from there we do have a rotational mode and this mode is the same as the manual mode that's on our PRES phantoms and so what this means is it provides full range of motion of the insert uh, from plus and minus 20 millimeters and um, it provides full full rotation of our of our motor so if there's a couple ways to use this feature you can you can just play it if you want to have um, a very simple waveform and you don't really want to um, you know have to import waveforms or edit any waveforms um, and that'll provide you the full range of motion and in addition if you set if you set a, a mechanical limit to the translation so as an example if you wanted it to move plus or minus five millimeters if you were to set that on the actual phantom itself and then you come out and use rotational mode, it'll, it'll move at that plus or minus five millimeters automatically. Okay, and then from outside the room here, you can uh, make adjustments to your uh, <clears throat> frequency. So in addition to this function, there is a, an actual simple way to make adjustments for your amplitude rather than have to change anything mechanically on the phantom itself. Um, and that's by importing a waveform or, or opening a waveform. And we do provide you with a, a pretty detailed library of different options. I'm going to choose sinusoidal for now just for simplicity. 
And so I've opened this waveform and it's actually now ready to uh, play on your Phantom. So you can just press play. And there's something quickly I want to just highlight here. Um, so you have a green waveform and this is the, the planned or intended pathway. And the red line shows you how accurately the Phantom is reproducing that position. And this is important because at times, you know, we, we may accidentally leave a piece of tape on the insert. Um, there may be some sort of other mechanical friction or uh, an increased load that's causing the um, Phantom to not accurately reproduce that waveform. And that's going to give you a visual representation. So if there was something wrong, this red um, pathway will deviate from the green pathway. <clears throat> and in addition, uh, we do have a feature where you can export all of those um, those data files and it provides you a C CSV format and you can compare how accurate um, those, those reproductions were. So that's useful to know um, that your waveform was reproduced exactly as intended and that way you can rely on the results that you've obtained. So in addition, so again, I've shown you here that we have a sinusoidal waveform that's moving uh, plus or minus 15 millimeters. But as you can see here, we don't have any way of changing the amplitude on the fly. Um, and the reason for that is that we do have that option on the MRI 40 uh, Phantom, but unfortunately I'm not connected to one right now. So when you do connect to the MRI 4D, you do have an additional mode, which is called sinusoidal. And you can actually use um, uh, slider bars to control the amplitude as well as the frequency. But because of the design of our, our PRESP family, uh, it was designed for you know standalone operation without software. And then later on, uh, it was developed to have software added. Um, but we can very simply change the, the amplitude, and that is by using the wave editor. So within the wave editor, there's many different options. Uh, I'll show you um, some of them here, but the main one I wanted to show you is just uh, adjusting that amplitude. So currently it's at plus or minus 15. I can very easily slide the slider bar and change it to whatever uh, free, uh, amplitude I'd like. Okay, so once I've done that, I can also change your offset if you don't want to be um, truly centered. And then I can go back to my phantom control. It's gonna ask me to save. And as you can see, now that I've saved it, I'm, I'm playing back a waveform and the software automatically changes to oscillation mode. And that's what oscillation mode does is it'll actually reproduce um, any, any, any waveform that you program or import and you'll be able to, to play it back uh, with, uh, with high degree of accuracy on the Phantom. So now I press play and as you can see, it's, it's now doing an adjusted um, amplitude and frequency from what was originally intended. <clears throat> so to move back to editing, because of these these three main um, operation modes have been covered, I will um, show you how to edit any uh, waveform that you have imported or uh, one that's been supplied by Modus. So I'm just going to open a, a typical pattern. <clears throat> it's a little bit less regular than the sinusoidal pattern I showed you. So I'll go into the wave editor. And in, in this feature here, again, you can, you can make adjustments to the amplitude or the offset. Um, you can apply different filters to the waveform itself. <clears throat> so here you have a, a low pass filter that'll, um, I think, I believe I've mentioned before that the, the Phantom can reproduce the waveform um, with a high resolution. So it samples the wave pattern every uh, 100 times per second. Um, so sometimes there's going to be situations where, you know, this jitter is not desirable. So you can remove that. Um, you can set um, a low-pass filter, and it smooths out the, fan, the waveform for you. Um, other filters that you can use is a, there's a drift filter. If it happens to drift away from um, the center, it actually re realigns it for you. You also have a cardiac or <clears throat> band stop frequency that it can remove. So if there's a an unwanted cardiac rhythm uh, frequency that's detected by the by your surface guided system or whatever system you're using to capture a waveform, you can remove that as well. We do also provide um, a spectrum analyzer that shows you it changes the domain from time to frequency, so you can analyze your waveform to see which frequencies are contributing to your your pattern. 
Um, so in addition, there's also very simple cut, copy, and paste functions. So you can, as an example, when you bring in um, a waveform that's been um, imported, you quite often get um, different artifacts or different motion things that people have moved or uh, coughed, and it's something that's undesirable. Like So as an example, I'm going to say this bit of this waveform here is not desirable. So I'm going to highlight it. Very easily I can cut. I can also go back and fix my errors by just hitting Control Z. And um, there's many different things I can do. So I can copy, let's say, let's say I really do like this pattern here. I can copy it and I can just continually paste it in multiple locations. So now what I've caused here is a very strange pattern which you really wouldn't use clinically for testing. But I did want to highlight another issue, or sorry, another feature. And what that is, is testing your waveform. So when you, again, when you bring in or import a waveform, um, if it has extreme changes in frequency or amplitude, the, the phantom may not physically be able to perform that waveform. So you can, you can easily perform a test. So you can see here, you just press test wave and it's failed. And there's five errors. So I can actually show you where each one is, but uh, to save some time, I'm just gonna press fix all. And now it's, it's made adjustments so that you can actually pass everything. But again, I'm just going to remove this. And I wanted to also highlight that you can zoom in very, um, and to find detail to each individual point. So as I said, 10, mil 10 millisecond sampling rate. And again, you can use this to you know add, add errors to a waveform. So let's say you have a nice smooth waveform and you want to test an ability for your gating system or, or a triggering system to turn on or off. Uh, you can make very easily make um, adjustments. And there you go, I've, I've made a change to the waveform. So again, if I test this, it's gonna fail. And then it's gonna show me the error. There's, there's probably a few different area, areas of errors here, but I'll fix them. And then I'll be able to perform, to play the waveform. Um, so in addition, there's there's a few other features here where you can you know you can stretch your waveform. So if you've you've acquired one that has a really high frequency but you want to slow it down, you can you can stretch the waveform itself. It applies it to the entire uh, waveform. Um, you can invert it if you choose to just visually. You like to see the peaks on top. It's up to you. Um, and you can also apply uh, recentering here as well. So in terms of editing, it's very simple to you know cut and paste. Um, and then you can always definitely save these and you'll be able to replay them using oscillation mode. Okay, so another thing I wanted to show you quickly under Phantom Control is uh, we do have an incorporated uh, deep inspiration breath hold, which I touched upon earlier. And with this breath hold mode, it's a way to perform a breath hold QA without the need to wait for an acquired um, waveform to be able to uh, apply your dose or or to provide your testing. So this was actually a physicist request that, you know, they, they said that it would be very useful to just have a manual mode where you, you know, you, you initiate a breath hold and just allows for more efficient testing. So I'll show you here, I'll just, this, we're now in breath hold mode and I'll hit play. So what it does is it starts the phantom motion uh, from plus 15 to minus five millimeters. Okay, and it's just gonna be a nice smooth, smooth pattern. And then when I'm ready to initiate a breath hold, I just press the button and on the next cycle, it'll create a breath hold. And it'll remain in that position until I press it again. So this allows for, again, more efficient testing for your techniques. It, it is not patient specific, but it does allow you to um, more efficiently QA a process where you are using a breath hold and you don't wanna wait you know, through 15 minutes of beam delivery to actually deliver your dose. You can you can test your you can test your processes much quicker. And again, like during this process, you can actually change the uh, frequency as well. Okay, so there there are a few more tricks in here. Um, with the uh, MRI four D, we do have an option of latency, um, which is an important feature that people are uh, exploring and very interested in. So again, unfortunately, I'm not connected to an MRI four uh, D phantom, so I don't have that available to me yet right now but I'll cover that uh, for you in a moment here on this next slide. So this is a screenshot of our 
latency window within the MRI 4D software. And you see here what's connected to the MRI 4D Phantom. So you get this option where you can select latency measurements. And above that, you have an option to assign the inputs and outputs of the actual Phantom. So as an example, you do have the ability to export our positional information to a third party device, uh, which can be useful for, for QA purposes. And um, just to show you on the left side here, uh, I mentioned previously that uh, once you're connected to the MRI 4D, you do have a sinusoidal mode. And this is the mode where you can set, now set your frequency, amplitude, and your offset all with uh, slider triggers here. So you can use this to set up your waveform. And when you're doing latency measurements, you can actually set your trigger range. So in this situation, it's the green line, uh, minus five to minus 10 millimeters. Uh, it's obviously not a clinical situation, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And as the uh, target is moving, you are now getting a output trigger pulse, which is in red, and you're getting a gold, um, gold uh, line here, which is showing the beam on signal input. And so what this does is the software automatically um, calculates all the, the delays and the, and the measurements, and you are getting a detailed report of all the latency measurements, you know, what your averages and uh, standard deviations are. And it provides this all in um, numerical information, but also graphical information. And it also provides uh, a key thing here. It provides you information for the beam on signal and the beam off signal. So it's um, some, some systems only do one. It's just uh, one measurement, but this one's actually breaking it up into beam on and off, and it gives you uh, details on both, which, which again is important when you're trying to understand your latency. And um, all of the, the information that is, is gathered from this process can be exported. So if you're using another software application to, uh, to dive into the information a little more, uh, you definitely can do that. So it is a useful, useful tool. And if you're interested in, in system latency, definitely contact MODIS and we can give you um, a more detailed rundown of, of the process itself.